This is the Provoke Prawn, and here I'm going to show you the setup and installation process for the Crucial T700 PCIe Gen 5 NVMe SSD. This drive is available in two different versions, one with the heatsink and one without, and I want to talk to you about the setup process, both in Windows, in your BIOS, and also at hardware level, with just simply installing the drive. There are some things to bear in mind with this drive, because obviously it's a Gen 5 drive, and it also has some things to think about, one of which is the temperatures. So this drive runs particularly hot, so you need to make sure that you've got good cooling, which is why I'd recommend, if you've not purchased it already, getting the one with the heat sink. You can see it has this massive heat sink on there, which helps disperse heat and keeping it run cool. I've done a video separately on what a difference this can make and why it can negatively impact your system if it doesn't have good cooling because it will thermal throttle. If it hits over 82 degrees centigrade, it will thermal throttle, which means that it won't run as fast as it should, and it will also shut down at 90 degrees C as well, so it's worth bearing in mind. So if you do buy the one without the heat sink that you can see on the bottom right here, be sure to get a good heat sink on your motherboard or a separate or additional purchase, and also make sure that you're running good cooling in your system so that the drive gets cooled nicely and runs at maximum efficiency. However, as I've said, the installation for both is otherwise the same. So I'm going to show you the initial steps for that, how you do it, and the things to think about. And another thing of note is that you do need to make sure that you've got a system that can support it. So you can see that this is a Gigabyte motherboard, for example. I'll leave links in the description to it and specs of the build that I'm using for demo purposes. But the top port on this motherboard supports PCIe Gen 5 NVMe SSDs. The other ones do not, so it actually has multiple drive bays on here but only the top one that you can see hidden away under this heat sink will actually work now you'll notice that when you take this off there's a sticker on the underside as well as a thermal pad so if you're using the one without the heat sink if you're using the crucial drive that doesn't have that shield in place then you want to take that off remove that sticker and then use that thermal pad to ensure good conductivity now you can see with this Gigabyte motherboard that there is a little clip here, which is basically a plastic clip that pushes out of the way, and then you can seat the drive down. Now this is common now on Gigabyte drives and on ASUS ones that have a Q latch, so basically a plastic latch to hold it in place. It's worth noting, however, that on some other motherboards, you may find that you need an M2 screw, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute, and basically that isn't included in the box so i'll leave links in the description where you can get those screws if you need to screw it down you've got to make sure it's obviously seated in place and held down nicely you can see this clip does that job but sometimes you might need a screw on that left hand side where the clip is instead so that's an important point point. and as i said if you're using the one without the heat sink make sure you've got the motherboard heat sink fully installed as well before you boot into your system because otherwise it will overheat and it won't run at the speeds that it should do. So basically we're returning that drive cover back over the top with the thermal pad applied. Now I want to quickly demonstrate what you do if you had a motherboard that requires a screw. So you can see this is an MSI drive I've done previously, but that one did need a screw. So you can see the setup here. You can get these screws separately, so don't panic. They do come included with some other boards, so you might find them in the box for your motherboard. It's a tiny little screw. You can buy them from Amazon really easily if you don't have it, and it basically just screws down in place of the clip. Now, once that's installed, and obviously everything's connected up, boot into Windows, and I'll go show you the setup process, because what you might find is that when you launch Windows, the drive just isn't there. So I've got my usual boot drive here, but the other drive that's installed separately isn't visible. Now what you can do is press the start button on your keyboard or in Windows taskbar, and then search for disk initialization, and it'll come up on the right hand side, or create and format hard drive partitions. That'll open up disk management, and you'll see that it should initialize the drive. I actually have two different drives in here which are brand new, so it's noted both of them, but for the sake of this, obviously just pretend there's just one drive. If you've only put one drive in your system, you'll only get one notification. You'll notice that the drive is black. So the drive that actually is already running is blue. You can see that's got a healthy note on it, that's drive C, but we want the black one. So right click on that, click new simple volume and go through the steps to format it. What we want to do then is apply a label to it so we know which drive it is in this case. Obviously, it's the Crucial T700, and this is the heatsink version. You don't need to make a note of this. You could just put whatever you want in there, but I'm doing it just so I can reference what they are and know what that drive is and the difference between them. Where you end up with multiple drives in your system, it's worth keeping an eye on which is which. So I've named it, and just being 
bear in mind that the formatting does take a little bit of time with this drive, so it just takes a little minute and then it's done. Now the next stage is to run a test to make sure everything's running as it should. I would recommend this, I re highly recommend it. You can use Hardware Monitor or Hardware Info 64 to track the temperature of the drive and also Crystal Disk Mark. These are two free downloads that you can use. Crystal Disk Mark is a benchmarking tool. You basically go through various different steps setting up for the MVME tests. I've done a video separately on how to do this, but basically you're basically setting it up to run and in order to go through a number of different tests to make sure the drive's running as it should. Obviously you want to make sure that you're getting the speeds that you should be. So you can see here, for example, that I've got 12,333 megabytes per second read speed. That is essentially what the speed should be. So I now know the drive is running at the speed that it should be, and that's great. The reason that it might not be running at that speed is you've installed it in the wrong slot on your motherboard. So if you install it on a PCIe Gen 4 slot, for example, one that doesn't support Gen 5 speeds, you'll only be able to get a maximum of around 7,000 megabytes per second. So if you're seeing that speed, then that's probably what's happened. Also, you may find there are other problems that are holding it back in terms of speed, one of which is the thermal throttling. So if it does run too hot, then it will be a problem. So if it gets over 82 degrees, you can see in the stronger tests further into this, I was only getting 88 megabytes a second read speed. So the more sort of it's used, the more pressure that's put on it, the slower it goes. But a maximum speed, you should be seeing about 12,000. So that's obviously what you're aiming for. So there are some things to bear in mind. Making sure it's running cool is very important. Now, if for whatever reason it doesn't appear in Windows, it doesn't appear in Task Manager, it doesn't appear in the disk creation tool as I've shown you, then what it might be is that there is a BIOS problem that's holding it back. So turn your PC off and back on again, mash the delete key until you get into the BIOS. Then what you want to do is basically look and see if it's being displayed under the M2 settings and in the quick boot sequence menu. If you can see it in there, then you should be initializing. And if it isn't, then there might well be a problem basically in the BIOS settings. Now, it's really tough to be able to show you what you might be looking for in your BIOS settings, because obviously it's going to vary from BIOS to BIOS, and there's so many different manufacturers out there. It's a bit tricky, but essentially what you want to do is head into the advanced settings and have a look around in there for the MVME configuration settings in there, and then basically check to make sure that it is running with the right speeds. There are usually settings in there where you can change it to be PCIe Gen 5, for example and to then also just check that it's recognized by the BIOS. Hopefully this has been helpful. This has been The Provoke Prawn. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.